What's up guys? It's April the what is this? The fifth. It's time to start thinking about ordering seed for uh, planting time. Uh, people are starting to run out of soybeans and run out of some of these cover crops. So what I want to do is give you the secret to how I uh, put together a correct mix. Before I get into that, I want to tell you that um, you need to be using mixtures of plants so that you have different root structure, different uh, leaf structure, and different heights of your plants. This is going to help you build soil. That's really a subject of another uh, video, but it's important to know that that's why uh, we're putting together a mix. Uh, most of the questions I get are like, what's the best plant for a food plot? That's a loaded question. It's a, you know, it really depends. You know, what's your site? What's your soil? What's your climate? Um, what's the location on the slope? There's all kinds of things that go into what will grow there and what won't. Do you want to put a lot of effort into it? You don't want to put any effort into it? Do you want to replant every year, use annual, annuals, or you want to use perennials? A lot of questions there. So <clears throat> we have our warm season stuff, and we have our cool season stuff, and we have soil building stuff. We have uh, plants that uh, improve your carbon nitrogen ratio, plants that improve uh, uh, nitrogen in the soil in case you want to plant something that requires a lot of nitrogen later. So it really all depends. And uh, <clears throat> it also depends on what the deer are like in your area and what they also have available elsewhere off your property. All right, so that's a whole other subject. I'm getting off into the weeds, so to speak. So my secret is to go to uh, green cover seed Dot com and in there you're gonna have a thing called smart mix it's a smart mix calculator they call it let me move this thing out of the way so you can I don't think I have that actually in all right so if you if you google smart mix you can't see my <clears throat> my URL up here I don't think I have it recorded but go to smart mix um, and it's a, an outfit called Green Cover Seed. Um, it's a pretty cool uh, little uh, program they have. And once you get in there, you register. You know, I kind of skipped that part because I'm already, you know, I already belong and everything. Now you can sign in as a guest, so you don't have to register or anything. But you can see where they say hello, Tyrone. Like I'm, I live in Tyrone, Pennsylvania. And the reason that they want to know where you live is they take a look at your area code and they know what the rainfall is, which is an average of 42 inches, and they know when the frost-free days are. So that tells them what to recommend for plants for me based on what I want. All right, so let's say that this is our summer food plot. We'll give it a name. You can name it anything you want, you know. You name it shit to feed deer, I don't, whatever. Now, we're not going to buy a tote. That's that's a ton. We're going to buy 50-pound bags. So you click that. Now, this thing will give you a price if you're going to buy the seed from uh, green cover seeds. But I don't buy them from there. I just use their calculator. Seeding method. You're going to use a drill. You're going to broadcast and then disc over it, or you're just going to broadcast on top. We're going to drill. Acres. This just kind of tells them what the volume is going to be. So let's just say I want enough for 10 acres. I'm going to do, what am I doing? Uh, I need to plant 10 acres on a couple of clients. I got two, two clients with uh, five acres each. Okay, now, what's the goal, what we're trying to achieve with our cover crops? Now, keep in mind that 
these are ag uh, companies. They're sell selling agricultural, not food plot ideas. So, but they, they're not mutually exclusive, all right? So let's say that we, uh, you know, we did our soil test and we have like a two and a half percent organic matter. Well, we might want to increase soil organic matter. Um, we want, might want to fix nitrogen so that we can grow um, oats or winter wheat later on in the fall. Let's see, what else can, let's say we have uh, weed problems. We want to suppress weeds. Supplemental grazing, yeah. I mean, probably always want that because we're trying to feed stuff, okay? Mycorrhizal fungi growth is extremely important. And if you're into it, you want to attract uh, pollinators and beneficial insects to increase the general health of your food plot. So let's say supplemental grazing is our, our number one goal. And nutrient cycling sounds good to me. Because we don't want to have to fertilize. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to put mycorrhizal fungi in here. Oh, sorry. Every time I fill out forms, I, I screw it up. So what's our next cash crop? Uh, venison is not on here. So let's say that for the, our winter cover, we're going to put in um, other cereals. So we'll put oats, wheat, barley for the winter. Plus, you know, we're always going to put peas in for the winter. But let's say other cereal. Seeding date, um, let's say we're going to go in, we're going to take this weekend off and uh, plant and then we're going to take the first weekend off in September we're going to plant then. All right, your selected growing period is 119 days, more than enough for soybeans of any kind, um, cow peas, uh, sunflowers, all my favorite stuff. All right, so up here you have dials that will show you according to your, uh, your choices. Uh, what you know what it's going to um, help you know I, I don't know it, how can I explain this why is it flashing like that holy moly it's enough to give you a headache well anyway we'll see what happens uh, you, you'll see what happens when uh, when that uh, starts to dial up as, as we pick our plants. Over here, are, this is where our goals are. Supplemental grazing, nutrient cycling, fungal growth, right? So that'll give us a, our, our dial uh, to, to tell us how we're doing with our goals, okay? Now, we always want legumes. So you click on Add Legume, Choose gives you a list so for our goals these are the best you know in our climate these are the best choices okay so now you have to use your own ideas and your own experience to uh, narrow this down some more I have never had luck with sun hemp um, I had a seed dealer tell me that it would grow so fast it would choke everything else out well I can't get it to grow more than ankle high so I don't know what he's talking about I've never had it grow and it's expensive so that's off my list permanently until somebody can convince me otherwise okay so now they have this red ripper cow pea regular cow peas and these are all excellent choices 
So iron and clay cowpea is a very um, cheap thing to put on. And here, this will pop up, and then you can choose your pounds per acre. Now, what I'm going to do is choose don't show this pop up again. And uh, I want the, um, the computer to tell me what my poundage ought to be. This is kind of neat. This is a new thing. It'll give you a picture of the, the mature plant. It's kind of neat. I wonder if, yeah, I think you can go there and get uh, get the price, more pictures, and more information about the product. So that's a new thing. That's pretty cool, actually. So a full uh, dose of that. If, if you were planting it by itself, you'd want 50 pounds of the acre, but that's not what we're doing. And you can see it's very cheap, 82 cents a pound. But we're not done. We need more legumes, more variety. So we come down here, and guess what? Your favorite thing, soybeans, are sold out. I'll be darned. So we're going to have to go get them somewhere else. But that's okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna substitute spring peas, and then you can you can even fool around with this. And even if you don't know what something is and you've never planted it before, hey, what the heck? Let's uh, let's try some mung beans. What the hell? And then we'll see how they do, right? And look at that. Supplemental grazing, we're at 10. Now, granted, they're talking about cows there. But, and, and our nutrient cycling, look at that. We're doing pretty good. Fungal growth is good. We haven't even gotten done yet. So, these are all good soil builders, as you can see. Grass in the summer, I don't want it. Unless... You want to do something like an Egyptian wheat along the edge or something like that, or you want to, you know, if you're going for, yeah, it kind of depends on what you're going for. You can put a wildlife grain sorghum in there if you're not going to plant in the fall and you want to leave that as a uh, grain available for pheasants and uh, big game and whatever. We don't want any of this stuff. No grass. Uh, but what I'm my, for my goals, I don't want any grass right now. So get rid of that. Whoops. Okay, brassicas. Everybody likes to put brassicas in in the fall, which is good because the uh, cold weather. It's a cool season plant and cold weather makes it pretty palatable but I can tell you that uh, African cabbage and rapeseed uh, collards are a wintertime thing where is the there it is hybrid kale not recommended but I can tell you that hybrid kale and I use uh, Paja or T Raptor, that's a hybrid uh, cross between a uh, rape and a turnip. If you can find that, that's what you want to put in. They don't have, they don't have that. So I'm assuming that this is something similar to that. Um, I don't know if I finished my thought. I think what I was getting at there was that that hybrid uh, Paja and T Raptor grows well into the summer especially if it has cover from your other plants so they don't get too dry and the deer will eat the hell out of them where like a 
uh, purple top turnip and a lot of things that you usually see like from biologic or whatever the deer don't really like them in the summertime there's better things to eat let's take a look there's no picture oh all we have is a picture of the seeds more info coming so it's a little expensive so maybe I don't know but we're not going to put much in um, full rates oh see this is your full rate and this is what they recommend in your mixture and as you add these will change and one of the one of the complaints I get when I start pushing mixtures on people is that you know they read somewhere where uh, when you mix different plants together different species and types uh, they do better on their own than they do mixed together well it depends on how you're looking at that if you're growing corn and you mix soybeans and sorghum in with the corn then obviously you're not going to get um, you know 200 bushel of corn out of that field I think we know that but what we're going to get is better soil health out of this this is a cover crop it's not a um, cash crop so there are two different ways of looking at that um, one thing is for sure that in a cover crop with a lot of mixture in it a lot of variety it's going to be more drought tolerant and it's going to give you more forage over a longer period of time than any uh, monoculture Plus, it's going to be more disease resistant, insect resistant, and again, more drought tolerant. <clears throat> and if you don't believe me, just uh, research it on your own. I, you know, I'll get into it in some other video, but you know, that's a fact, Jack. All right. I like sunflowers a lot. Pretty cheap. I like buckwheat. Pretty cheap. Good soil builders. So we hit add again. Sunflower. Now the only problem with putting a broadleaf in with your with your mix is that you know, and you have to keep this in mind that it limits your ability to use herbicides. If I leave all the grass out. Then I can spray it, like say if I, I'm getting uh, an infestation of foxtail, which is not the end of the world, um, you know, as long as it doesn't take over everything. But if I get Japanese stilt grass, I want to spray that with clethodim or something that will kill gl just grass, and it won't kill my, my other plants. And that's another reason not to add any grass in your mix in the summer. But if you want to spray something that is, um, you know, like a 2,4 dB, all right, it won't hurt any of these legumes, but it's going to kill your broadleaves. Now there are herbicides that uh, sunflowers will put up with too, so you just have to research that. So Let's see what else we got here. Now you can, you know, I I do have a mix that I put together. I'm going to plant that has Phasalia because I want to try it. I've never tried it. It's a beautiful plant. And uh, chicory is a good thing to have in your mix. But you don't want a lot of it. Like, like here you want, they're only calling for less than one pound. So later in the summer when everything else is kind of getting beat up by the hot sun, chicory is going to be coming on strong. Cow peas will put up with a lot of heat. It's more of a southern uh, plant. They use it a lot down in, uh, you know, if you're down in Georgia, Alabama, Texas. All right. Now, 
some of this stuff you can substitute things that you can buy locally check out this black oil sunflower you know I'm totally sold on sunflowers because I was doing some work last year I did a timber sale next to a sunflower field every time I went out there there was less and less and less of this sunflower field I'm like what the heck here deer were just eating the hell out of these sunflowers and then in the fall there were bears in here there were turkeys there were deer every time I went there in the morning stuff would come running out and flying out of there and they killed a, a bear and saw a real big one uh, by the time rifle season came in all the sunflowers were gone and that was about I want to say as approximately four acres five acres of sunflowers man that fed a lot of wildlife so I'm sold on them plus it looks terrific and same with this uh, Phasalia beautiful flowers so this is a great pollinator mix because you you'll get uh, pea flowers and you're gonna get um, buckwheat flowers you're gonna get sunflowers and these are gonna mature this this will mature first go to seed first so you get the flowers early so you should have flowering and uh, pollinator flowers available for quite a lot of the summer as long as the deer don't eat it all up all right here's your cost $31 an acre not too bad it's less than a buck a pound for this mix not too bad so, you know, here's a little dial that shows you your frost-free days and when you're planning on planting. This is kind of an interesting pie chart because it, it uh, kind of underlines my point of cover crops. This, uh, this whole part of the pie, in a lot of cases, the field is fallow. Uh, dirt showing, it's eroding, there's no living roots in it to feed the mycorrhizal fungi and the bacteria that's down there and all the soil biota. This is your growing season. It's just a short period of time and this is kind of your corn season right here. So the rest of the year you're damaging your soil life. So what we want to do is when we get to here plant a crop that'll get you all the way through it's gonna grow up to here and then it'll start growing again right about there so that gives you about half the year of growth plus living plants all through the winter that's what you want to strive for okay so that's how I go about it your current your uh, mix is currently calculated based on 10 acres verify your acres these guys are in Nebraska and that's why I don't I don't buy them from them it's too far away so unless you want to drive out to Nebraska your shipping will be brutal so that's how you go about it um, You can play around with it some more if you want to. That's chickpeas. Don't don't show me that again. No grass. We want want to add a legume. Let's just screw around with this. Burseem clovers. I don't know. It's too expensive. How about some alcyke? Oh, balanza clover. Let's let's get some of that. I'm uh, experimenting with that. I've got a couple of fields planted with it. I want, I'm dying to see how it does. Spring peas. 
then of course we're going to put soybeans in here the, the other thing is I wanted to point out is that in a case like this uh, you know we're never going to have spring peas that look like that because the deer are going to eat the hell out of them and when you're mixing them together now these will go down and down as we add more plants but we want to readjust that we want to take this as a suggestion but when we actually go to you know we could leave this alone like that and then add another 40 pounds of soybeans but if the deer are chewing the hell out of these plants you want to increase the stuff that really gets the browse pressure let's forget about brassicas for now on this mix I want buckwheat I want sunflower Phasalia Look at that Stuff's expensive. All right. And then let's look up here, our carbon nitrogen ratio. Why is it doing that? Anyway, we're good on nitrogen fixation. CN ratio, we're not good. And that's because we didn't put any grass in. They want to see more carbon. But I'm not that concerned about that right now because we're going to add that in the fall. Grazing is an 8. Drought tolerance, 6.1. Uh, frost, we're good. We're not worried about winter. We're going to worry about that later. Diversity is pretty good. See, I think I'm getting a low score here because of the fact that uh, I didn't add any brassicas in there. Mycorrhizal fungi is really good. And this mix is $43 an acre. It's a little more expensive. So you, you can see how you can go back through and sort of play around with it. You know, if you didn't want to spend that much. That's, that's kind of chicken feed compared to uh, what you would pay for, like, you go to Whitetail Institute and get one of those mixes. I don't recommend buying mixes that are cover crop mixes because... Again, they're designed for agricultural use where you're doing a field that's, uh, you know, 150 acres. Um, we're feeding deer, so we want stuff that deer will eat, and we want stuff that's going to increase the health of our soil so that we don't have to do a lot of fertilizing. And we want to have forage all summer until we plant again in the fall and maybe even some overlap there if we can get it all right and then I can take this and I look at my mix okay so they want us to have you know 20 pounds here of of our legumes but I'm gonna increase that I'm okay with two pounds of balanza clover but this isn't enough peas and uh, you know I want soybeans in there so we might want to leave this alone as far as these weights but I also want to add in then another 30 pounds of, of soybeans okay sunflowers I might increase that a little bit just because I know that some of them are going to get chewed on buckwheat I don't know I'll probably do 10, 10 pounds of buckwheat so you just write all this stuff down and then you then you call whoever you're getting it from and you order it. And if they're if they say, Well, I can't get a hold of these that I don't know, what is, what is Fasalia? I can't can't get a hold of that. And you can just leave it out or you can do whatever. Alright, so that's how it that's how I do it. And if you want to try this out, it's it doesn't cost you anything. It you know it's open for the public to use. Um, you can sign in as a guest if you want to. You don't have to tell them, you know what. 
where you live or anything. They're not going to bother you with any advertising. Or, this gives you the seeds per acre. It's almost 2 million seeds. 40 pounds. So here's your 40 pounds to the acre. So when you go to set your seed drill, you know what you're what you need to uh, set your seed drill for. Shipping weight. Gives you great information. All right. All right, well, uh, you're probably bored stiff, so I'm going to end it there. And we'll talk about some of these plants maybe at another time. Or, you know, if there's anything you want me to research or tell you what I know about, just please comment down below. If you want to keep this content coming, you got to comment, share. I want you to subscribe. So hit the subscribe button. It's the the trillium at the end of this you just click on the trillium and then usually I put uh, another video that you can click on to that you can watch some other videos too so um, alright well until next time good luck uh, spring turkey hunting is almost right around the corner so good luck to you see you next time <laughs>